Hey guys, I'm Barry and I'm glad to be able to share day 30 of Grace Happens devotional series with you. I'm so excited that you're here to join us and if you've missed any videos, head over to Facebook and watch them. Today's reading comes from Grace Happens and it's in chapter 30. It's called Grace Offerings and it tells the story of a huge risk we took as church many years ago. Make sure to take time and read it today. You know, it reminds me of a story. I remember um, in a church many, many years ago, um, I had this car, really cool car, 73 Monte Carlo, um, but I was missing my front window. I didn't have a front window, and I was heading into uh, fall and into winter, and I remember being in a place, man, I can't afford to get a new window. So I cr created this cardboard cutout, put it over my window, I taped it, I cellophaned it, did everything I could throughout the winter. I remember going to a church service many years ago, and the pastor was telling us about giving unconditionally, giving with everything you have. And I remember thinking to myself at that time, in my wallet, I don't have anywhere near the money I need to pay for this window. But it was everything I had. And so as the pastor, as the pastor started talking about it and as the plate came through, I thought, you know, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going I'm to see if God can really make this happen. I thought, God, this is an opportunity for you to show off. So I pulled out my wallet. I looked in. I reached in what I had. And I put everything in the offering plate. And I watched the offering plate go by. And I thought, okay, God. We'll see what happens because now I don't have anything. I got nothing. I don't want gas money. I have nothing. The very next day, my dad calls me and says, Hey, son, I'm at the junkyard. I have your window. They're going to install it for us. Why don't you come down ASAP? And I remember hanging up with my, with my dad on the phone. I'm like, God, are you serious? I've waited three months for this. I, I kept trying to trust myself, trying to put it in my own hands. The one time I trust you is the one time that you come through. And then I started thinking, you know, following Jesus can be very risky. I mean, think about the disciples who first followed him. These guys left their businesses behind to spend three years with Jesus and learn from him. That's kind of a big deal. It's kind of risky. All throughout the Bible, God calls people to take big risks for him. I mean, Esther risked her life when she was asked to speak to the king about the plot to kill the Jewish people. Noah risked his reputation when he agreed to build a huge boat in the middle of dry land. David risked getting squashed into jelly when he went to fight Goliath. Ruth risked starving to death when she left her home to go to Israel with Naomi. Rahab risked getting captured and killed when she protected the Jewish spies. The Hebrew slaves risked getting captured and massacred when they left Egypt to follow Moses out into the wilderness. We could go on, but I think the riskiest hero of all is God himself. God risks everything for you and me, and he does it all the time. He believes in us, and He sticks with us, even when we fail. He loves us when we don't love Him back. He trusts us with each other, even though He knows we're going to lie to each other, hurt each other, and use each other to feed our own selfishness. That song we sing in church all the time, Reckless Love, it really does ring true, doesn't it? God's love does feel reckless, doesn't it? Being willing to go through torture and death for people who might not even notice. There's some serious risk right there. So when God invites us into a big risk, he's not asking us to do anything he himself has not already done. And he knows that the risk of where life is. He knows the more comfortable we are, the less of his heart we're going to be able to understand because he's an adventurer. So what's the risk God is putting in front of you right now? Take some time to make sure it's really from him. Talk to people you trust. Check it against his word and pray seriously about it, asking him help Asking Him to help you to be confident in what He's putting in front of you. Keep in mind that the risks God gives us are always for the benefit of other people, not ourselves. These risks of generosity, once you are confident that it's God putting the risk in front of you, when it lines up with God's Word, when you've prayed and asked the Holy Spirit to guide you, and when the wise people around you agree that the generous risk you're considering is the right one, then it's time to jump. And when you do, you'll find that God is already there, waiting for you to go to the adventure with Him. So here's my challenge. Today's challenge is very simple. I'm going to ask you to give a risky financial gift. The amount is between you and God, but it shouldn't be easy. Give it away and see what God does. But buckle up, because when we take God seriously enough to step out and risk, we jump into His adventure. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for the amazing God that you are. Father, thank you so much for allowing us to trust you with these amazing opportunities, Father, for you to show off. 
Father, as we give our gifts, we give whatever it is. Father, we give ourselves. I pray, Father, that you just allow us to, uh, to see the amazing work that you're going to do in our lives. So, Father, we love you. We thank you. And we just trust you with the amazing thing that you're going to do today. So thank you, Father, for this time. We praise you and thank you. In your name I pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. We'll talk to you soon.